In this video, we're going to continue our investigations looking at a single numerical or quantitative variable by looking at the spread of such data. The first measure of spread we're going to look at is the standard deviation. So to make sense of what the standard deviation is, I'm going to introduce some more terms. So first, the difference between one value in a data set and the mean is referred to as deviation. So just to emphasize here, the difference between a single data value and the mean is called the deviation or a deviation of that data value. So then the standard deviation is just the average distance away from the mean. So meaning uh, the average of all of the deviations. So we're gonna look at this in an example. So suppose there are four students sitting at a table. Their ages are 22, 19, 19, and 36. We're first, or the first step in calculating the standard deviation is to calculate the mean. So we saw this in the pre previous video. The mean of a data set, or X bar, is just the sum of the data values divided by the sample size. So in our case, that would be 22 plus 19 plus 19 plus 36 divided by, what is N in our case? Four, we have four data values. So if we add uh, up that numerator, divide by four, you can pause the video for a moment to do that on your own. But we see that we get 24. So our units here are years, 24 years old. So then the next step in calculating the standard deviation is to first find the deviations of each age. So we need to find the deviations of the ages. And again, to do that, we find the distance that each age, say X, is from the mean X bar to get the difference in ages for each student compared to the mean. This gives us an idea of distance from the mean each of the ages is. So we can just uh, do that by making the following list. So I'm gonna look at uh, a table here of an X minus an X bar. So for us, an X, our first X, our first data value is 22. And again, the mean is always gonna be this 24. So 22 minus 24, 19 minus 24, 19 minus 24 and 36 minus 24. So we compute all those differences. We get negative two for the first data value, negative five for the next data value, negative five again, and then 12. These deviation values are all in terms of years. And, oh yeah, let's write that down first, <laughs> years. Now, when computing a standard deviation, this difference here is referred to as a distance, which we don't really, we can't get negative values of distances. So a way to kind of get rid of these negative values is to square each of these distances or each of these differences. So that's the next step here, part C, because the negative distances don't really make sense. We look at the squares of each of these different distances. So our next step here would be to compute the square of each deviation. And we'd write that out in notation as squared deviation as x minus x bars squared. So we can do that now. So we had the 22 minus 24. Squaring that gives us a negative two squared, so four. 19 minus 24 squared would give us negative five squared, which is 25. Again, for the other 19 value, giving us 25 here. And then our 36 minus 24 squared, giving us 12. Oops, not 12. That would be 144. Good catch. So again, these are squared distances. And because we are starting, the difference that we were computing at was how many years away from the mean each value was these would be squared years. So if we wanna put a unit on it, it would be years squared. Now this doesn't quite make sense uh, quantitatively squaring this distance, uh, but this is a convention uh, in the standard deviation formula. 
All right, so let's continue our computing. So our next step in computing the standard deviation is to compute the average of these squared deviations. So to do that, we first add them up. Now a subtlety here in the standard deviation for calculation is that rather than divide just by the sample size, we actually divide by the sample size minus one. So if you'd like in notation, that looks like n, which is the sample size minus one. This term n minus one, the sample size minus one, is often called the degrees of freedom. And this will come up in some other statistical computations as well. The average, so that we're computing here, is often called the variance. So we can carry out this computation. Notation, the variance, um, as I said, is the average of these squared distances. And it turns out the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So using notation, I'm gonna write S for the standard deviation. So S squared is gonna be the average that we're gonna compute. So that would be this 22 minus 24 squared plus 19 minus 24 squared. And again, I'm just taking each of these terms in this list, adding them up and then dividing by the degrees of freedom. Plus 19 minus 24 squared plus 36 minus 24 squared. And then all of this large sum, we're gonna divide by the sample size minus one or minus one. So you can get out your calculator. I'll give you a minute to uh, compute that term. Feel free to pause the video to allow yourself more time. All right, so when we finish that computation, we should be getting 66. And in this case, it would be years squared. So then what we just computed, this S squared is the sample variance. So we're almost close to the standard deviation. But let me just record what we did using notation. So S squared, which is the sample variance, I'll write it out here. Using notation would be the following. So we have our sigma, which again, just signifies that we're gonna take a sum of a bunch of terms. We're gonna add up a bunch of terms. What term are we gonna add up? Well, we're gonna add up the variances squared. So X minus, or the deviation squared rather. So X minus X bar squared, and then divide by N minus one. So if you Google sample variance, you'll get a formula that looks exactly like that. And now just using again, um, notation, what we just did was uh, looked at the no notation for sample variance. We have a similar idea when we look at an entire population and that's the population variance, often denoted by a little sigma, lowercase sigma here, which is notation for the population variance. So this is if you were able to collect data on every individual or every case in your population, we use sigma. The formula for population variance is slightly different. The only real difference, however, is that rather than divide by n minus one, you get to divide by n. A lot of the statistical formulas that we look at um, have been built up over many years and are, uh, the, the way that we compute them is often just based on convention. And we'll see later why the standard deviation is an important calculation. So now in doing this big calculation so far, we need to make up for the fact that we squared our units. So we need to take the square root of what we just computed. The square root of the variance is referred to as the standard deviation. So we're almost there, folks. It is the average distance away from the mean. With our data, we expect how whatever the mean units are, on average, it will differ by standard deviation units. So continuing our example here, we can compute the standard deviation. So for us, the standard deviation would be 
that big term that we just computed. And I'm just going to write it out so you can see that you can carry out each step. 22 minus 24 squared plus 19 minus 24 squared plus another 19 minus 24 squared plus 36 minus 24 squared. Now, what do we do with this sum? We divide by 4 minus 1, and then we take the square root. Excellent. All right, so when we do all that work, we get the square root of the 66 that we computed in the previous step, which comes out to about 8.1240. I'm just going to keep track of my units here. These are, again, years. So this variance or this spread is measured in years. So now let's fill in this sentence, this example sentence, with the information that we just found with our standard deviation. So now we can fill this in for ourselves. So with our data, we expect 24 years and on average, it will differ by 8.1240 years. And just to be a bit more specific about what our data is. So with our data, that is ages of students. With the age of students, I'll just say students, <laughs> we expect that if we grab any random student, we expect their age to be about 24 years. And on average, if we pick a random student, uh, on average, their age will differ from 24 years by about eight years. So we can round here by about eight years. So now I just wanna finish this out using our notation for standard deviation. So again, we use S to denote the sample standard deviation. Often denoted STDEV. That formula looks like the following. It's big square root of sigma of X minus X bar squared over N minus one where again, X bar is that mean and is the sample size. And that Sigma just says, tells us to add up all of those terms. And then similarly, as we saw with the variance, little Sigma is denote, is used to denote the population standard deviation. So we are gonna see some more examples in this class and in your homework of ways in which the standard deviation are used. But at this point, it would be a good idea to rewatch any parts of this video to help better familiarize yourself with this measurement of the spread. In the next video, we're gonna put what we learned together about the mean and standard deviation and look at a particular example uh, within a given data set. Thank you for watching, keep up the hard work.